who will not be with you on Collision. Kevin Kelly, who has reportedly been fired by AEW, that is by way of the Pro Wrestling Torch. This story was posted up to our front page of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter today by Chief Editor Joseph Courier. Kelly had been an announcer for AEW Collision since the show premiered in June of 2023. After initially serving as Collision's lead play-by-play -play voice, Kelly was replaced in that role by Tony Schiavone last October, joining color commentator Nigel McGuinness. The Pro Wrestling Torch story says, quote, Kelly's performances were seen as subpar within AEW, including Tony Khan, apparently since Tony Schiavone was called to take over the lead play-by-play -play role a few months into Collision's run on TNT, end quote. Dave Meltzer inquired and was told that the situation was an internal matter. Kelly did not work Thursday night's AEW Collision taping and was removed from the roster page. Kelly had sent out a tweet last weekend claiming that he had been benched in AEW due to being libeled by ROH announcer Ian Riccoboni. In August of last year, Riccoboni made posts on the Voices of Wrestling Discord server that mentioned Kelly promoting, quote, QAnon movies, referencing Kelly's support of the movie Sound of Freedom. Riccoboni admitted that the Discord posts were made by him, but said he did not know how Discord worked. Riccoboni said that he should have read up on what was public and what was private, but he had no regrets about the posts. Kevin Kelly, in a tweet that he had sent out, said, and this is on March 2nd, but the idea of what I bring to the table is lost there because Ian libeled me. So I sit on the bench, valued by my peers, waiting to get my number called. I keep asking why, but I, but I, excuse me, I keep asking why, but I get pushed aside. It's okay because there is no one better than me. Ask the ones that know and they will tell you. It has affected my standing within the industry and I want corrective action taken, Kelly wrote in another tweet. Kelly began in the wrestling business in 1991, working for Eddie Mansfield's independent promotion based out of Orlando, Florida, the International Wrestling Federation. He got his job with WWE, uh, got a foot in the door to WWE because of a former IWF wrestler. Uh, uh, was it Billy Gunn? I think it was Billy Gunn, actually, that got him in the door. It was either him or Hardcore Holly. I think it was Billy Gunn that actually got him in the door there. And then after that, worked as a manager in ECWA in the early 2000s uh, when that company was one of the bigger independents on the East Coast. Also, obviously, his work that he did as an announcer with WWE, MLW, Ring of Honor, and, of course, New Japan Pro Wrestling. So I am sure that we have not heard the end of this story, most certainly have not heard the end of this story. TNA Sacrifice is tonight. On TNA Plus from the St. Clair College in Windsor, Ontario. There was no good way to transition into this. Sorry, TNA. TNA World Champion Moose will face off against Eric Young. TNA Knockouts World Title Three Way Jordan Grace against Zaya Brookside against Tasha Steeles. World Tag Team Title Match Ace Austin and Chris Bay against Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards with Alicia Edwards. She's great. I'm sorry. I love the Eddie Edwards, Alicia Edwards act. I really do. TNA Knockouts Tag Team Title, Masha Slamovich and Killer Kelly against Danny Luna and Jody Threat, Nick Nemeth against Steve Macklin, Josh Alexander against Alexander Hammerstone. I'm actually lo really looking forward to that one, too. And a six-man tag team match, Mustafa Ali and the Good Hands against Chris Sabin, Kevin Knight, and Kushida. They have also added a no disqualification match for tonight, PCO against Khan. So that's been added to the show as well. I'm not sure about any pre-show or anything like that, but that is available on TNA+. Plus. I think I talked about this last Friday, but Hard to Kill ended up doing 19,700 buys on television pay-per-view, which was more than double what they did for Bound for Glory. Uh, which did under 6,900 on television, and that was considered large. Uh, Dave in the newsletter said if you factor it in the streaming buys, it ended up at around 60,000, which would be equivalent to what Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle did at TNA Genesis in 2006, which set the record for the company. But as he also mentioned, it did not lead to... Ticket sales picking up. If you look at the ratings for Access TV, they really 
don't vary at all and sometimes they they widely vary which is you know you can you can throw pretty much all of those ratings out there when it comes to access now how they're doing on tna plus that's all that matters how much money that they can continue to bring in by putting on a, a pretty darn good product again there are a lot of options out there tna has turned itself around into becoming a a much better option at least it had been now with Scott Demore right not there anymore, we'll see how things go. But this is probably going to be a good litmus test tonight. Number one, for how the show is received. And then obviously for how many shows or how many buys that the show does. Game Changer Wrestling returns to the show boat this weekend in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I'd like to be here for that, but I, I can't be. I'm going to just be down the coast here doing what I got to do, watching it on Triller TV, which is where both shows will air. Saturday, the Ashes to Ashes show, Nick Gage against Ryuji Ito, Matt Tremont against Abdullah Kobayashi, and what will surely be a scientific encounter for the ages. A strap match between Mance Warner and Effie as Mance Warner's diabolical deeds continue in GCW, just breaking up the whole second gear crew. Just, just the terrible things going on there. Dan Housen against Charles Mason. Yes, I said that. Dan Housen against Charles Mason. One is very evil and very nice. One is very evil and very evil. Tony Deppin against Microman. John Wade Murdoch against Brandon Kirk. Blake Christian and Shane Mercer against the Garbage Daddies of Alec Price and Cole Radrick. And for the GCW Tag Team Championship, Violence is Forever against Dark Sheik and Sawyer Wreck. I would love to see Violence is Forever against filthy tom lawler and davy boy smith jr i don't think we're going to get that match i would like to see that match sunday gcw so much fun joey janela against jack cartwheel brandon kirk against micro man six person tag team match i think i can say this on national radio thrussy will face off against maki death kill club maki ito matt Tremont, and nick gage so that's a hell of a team. Uh, Alec Bryce and Cole Radrick against Charles Mason and Richard Holiday. Abdullah Kobayashi and Ryuji Ito against Ciclope and Miedo Extremo. John Wayne Murdoch against Casey Cattell. And GCW World Champion Blake Christian, who you see lose on Ring of Honor TV a lot. All you do is see him win in GCW. He faces off against former GCW champion, the woman he won the title from, Masha Slamovich. He did that last June 4th. He has had 36 successful defenses of the GCW world title. I don't know how many Nick Gage had, but that has to be close to the record. I, I, I don't know what the, the plan is with Blake Christian. I don't know who the person is that ultimately takes it off of him. But tonight, Masha Slamovich, 37th defense. CMLL is also tonight, as they always are, from Arena, Mexico. The catch with this show is it is their first ever all women show inside Arena Mexico celebrating International Women's Day, CMLL, 91st year of business. They ran their first all women show ever, Amazonas del Mundo, on October 25th, 2022 at the Arena Coliseo in Guadalajara. And then they had their first ever all women show in the city of Puebla last October 30th. The main event for tonight, La Harachita and Luvela against Andromedia and Scotty. Scotty? I don't know about her. But Andromedia was, uh, she was wrestling for Triple A and just left and ended up in CMLL. Uh, she and Scotty again face off against Luvela and La Harachita. Dark Silhouette against La Catalina for the CMLL japanese championship i forgot they even had this belt they brought it back in september after it was dead for years but technically dark silhouette is the champion reina isis against azusis for the mexican women's title the copa irma gonzalez the irma gonzalez tournament will be taking place and they have another match on there as well that is taking place tonight at arena mexico again the first ever all women show in the history of that building speaking of women Stardom's 10th anniversary Cinderella tournament kicks off on Saturday inside the Budokan in Yokohama. First round matches Hanan and Hanako, Yuzuki and Starlight Kid, Momo Kogo and Zena, Koguma and Ruaka, Saiida against Saki Kashima, Yuni Mizumori against Lady C, Sayaka Kurara 
against Natsuka Tora and Miyu Amasaki against Rana Yagami. Eight women, including Mirai, all received buys in the first round. Mirai has won the tournament in back-to-back -back years. She was the first person to ever do that. Other women who got by, Suzu Suzuki, Mei Sierra, Ami Sorhei, Wakasukiyama, Hazuki, Azumi, and Mei Sakurai. The second round of the tournament will take place on Sunday at Korokan Hall, and the finals will be coming up on March 20th in Nagoya. I guess if I had to handicap this right now, I don't think Mirai is winning three in a row, that's for sure. Azumi? Probably is, you know, he, the funny thing about Azumi is I don't think if you if you were to take Azumi right now and say you're facing Julia or you're going to take her and say, OK, you're going to be in a title match here against Micah, people would buy it. I mean, people are already I don't know if she necessarily has to win this tournament. I kind of would like to see somebody like an Hazuki win this tournament because again i don't know if azumi necessarily needs it but again if this is about optics and you believe that she needs to win a big tournament and to kind of you know make her case that she's here for 2024 this could be a good way to do it thank you for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again